I was about eight, I think, eight or nine anyway, and I, a very small set, you couldn't build much with it. I think he was about seven or eight, I can't be absolutely sure, but around that age. Well, I was eight and a half at Christmas time, I got like normal presents from everybody, you know, from, the, from my mother and all that, and I got my first Meccano, I was very young. It was red and green, came with a few, a few parts, four wheels I think, and you, know, you could make set of fairly basic things. For a period of time, I was doing all the little models uh, from the books, and children used to come and look at them, you know, and it was something fascinating for me. My father, uh, he'd just been demobbed from the army after the war in 1945, and uh, <clears throat> the subsequent years, he, I remember him saying he would like us as children to have things that he could never have as a child. And, uh, I think that was one of the reasons why he started me on Meccano. So I credit my father with that. I'm about to see something and think that would make a good model. But quite a few ideas just sort of sit there in the back of my mind for, for years before I have the time to really think, well, okay, it'll definitely be this model. I wouldn't build anything I didn't have any sort of real interest in. Bridges and trams and trains. I'm more interested in generally, so my models tend to you know, follow that path, I'd say. There was um, a Makanda magazine, and that was in uh, late 75, early 76, um, when I I just placed an advert, I mean a free sort of notice as it were, that I wanted to form a Meccano club in the South East London area. I think it was reading the other reports of other clubs in the Meccano magazine, thinking, well, maybe I'll join one, you know, and just meet up with other like-minded people. That, that was it, really. I'm on my own, as far as the family's concerned. <laughs> I mean, my brother was didn't really get into Meccano at all. I mean... They'll all happily come around and look at the exhibition, but none of them have uh, shown any interest in building anything. It's more of a boy's hobby in a way. And, and years ago, Meccano did try to include girls by having a photograph of a boy and a girl on the packaging. But that didn't, it didn't go down well. I think they found sales might have even dipped, because boys would look at that and think, I don't want to be involved with that, there's a girl on the box, <laughs> you know, six, year, eight year old boys, that sort of thing. Um, so that idea got dropped, I think. It's, it's quite an absorbing hobby, I mean, it's obviously, it's very much a hobby you do by yourself, that's the only thing about it. Uh, but it's, uh, it's mainly, mainly in a way, sometimes it can be like, uh, like solving a puzzle in some ways. Uh, I mean, you, you either, you can, you can build something from some instructions, then you've got to somehow work out what they're trying to tell you and you can put it that way or the other way is that you just build something of your own without any plans you know the ho you can make the hobby what you like in a way the hobby is is um well it's a hobby so it's whatever you want to do in a way you know no luckily no one's telling us what to make <laughs> Well, Meccano was possibly the greatest toy ever invented, and also by building everything in science, engineering and all that, it opens up my mind to see everything about the Industrial Revolution that this country produced to the world, and all this sort of thing, obviously, if you could do with Meccano, and that was very attractive to me. It opens up my world, you know, and I, ever since, you know, I, I, I like it very, 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 sorry, very much. <laughs> Well, even when I'm watching television or something, my mind is always thinking what I'm going to do next. And I start in designing something. I like to do something unusual, something different all the time. So when I start doing a model, I start with an idea. And that idea, I keep changing it according to how it's actually being built. You know, and all my models have come that way. I, I'm always thinking my next one, in my next one, whether it's a challenge, I know there are challenges, uh, thinking that possibly is very difficult to achieve, you know. And I like to, to try something new to see whether I can do it.
you know, kind of develop the mind of people, especially children, you know, can start building something and new ideas produce inventions, and many inventions are actually happening from Meccano, especially in the, in the older days. So I think the, the Meccano, you know, keep your mind active, and with that you can not only build what you see in books, but also the, your own ideas and develop new ideas, new things, and new models, you know, and that is all fascinating. You can possibly build anything that is in engineering, you know, anything mechanical, cars, trains, cranes, uh, boats, uh, aeroplanes, whatever. It's a challenge, obviously, because you have to produce the, the power units to, 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 to move all the models, and sometimes you find difficulty and all that. But I think you can build anything with it. A working robot, a dancing man, whatever. I've done that, so, you know, quite a few times. Yes. Well, Lego apparently at the moment is one of the most important toys, the most interesting toys uh, for children, but I think Meccano is more technical in every way of form. That is for my, my, way, my point of view, you know, Meccano is something more challenging than Meccano. Lego, okay, you can put things on top of each other and create whatever, but with Meccano I think it's more interesting and more complex. It can go backwards as well. Why not? All we have to do is this. Well, that's the sad part of it. When you when you build a model and you have been doing uh, working very hard for certain time, you know, to build it, and then you have to actually dismantle it to create another one. It's very sad indeed because you say, "Oh, I would like to keep it forever." something that you can't, because otherwise you will need a huge place to put them all and also it will be very expensive to have so many parts. So every year one or two models are dismantled and give way to another one. And that's the way it goes, uh, we can do nothing about it. Right, he's off. <laughs> Um, I was living in America at the time and uh, <clears throat> I got back into the hobby while I was there and uh, started to research the hobby on the internet and really discovered how wide uh, the, the hobby not had become, it had been there all the time and the interest had been there through clubs and societies all over the world, it's just that I hadn't realised that it was as popular as it appeared to be. And uh, what I've found is that being retired is a big advantage because I can spend a lot more time than I would ever been ever had available to to think about and to work on modelling and also to do the research and everything that goes along with it. The uh, the London Eye, for instance, uh, it took me 18 months uh, from start to finish, which uh, is a long period of time, and some people. Uh, ask how many hours, well I've really no perception of how many hours went into it, but it was an awful lot. My engineering background was, was definitely inspired by my early interest in the kind of, and the, the mechanisms that I used to play with. But I was always interested in mechanical models. Um, I learnt a lot about uh, clutches and gearboxes and differentials and by the age of 12 I could discuss those kind of uh, uh, mechanisms quite freely. And, uh, at that time, my only interest in uh, career was to become a motor mechanic. It can be expensive, and uh, I mean, one can buy a handful of parts, particularly if they're brass components, 
uh, in a meeting and, and there's 30 to 100 pounds worth in, in one hand. Uh, <clears throat> I always argue I don't play golf so it's not expensive. <laughs> <laughs> This <laughs> is the actual London Eye. It, the whole thing is supported by these backstay cables. Finishing the model and it, and it uh, satisfying one's original intention or specification uh, is the reward. And, and when it finally works the way, the way it was intended, um, then uh, it, it creates a great deal of satisfaction, yes. just a general chance for a chat and we all get together a lot of members and produce everybody our own models I like to see what what, what other modelers are, are making you know we have many ideas shares me you know we buy parts we sell parts we also it's quite interesting you know this is fantastic they're all a very friendly environment and it becomes a very exhilarating day out for me You have a dealer who comes along. He, he, he just deals. He just sells Meccano. That's all he sells. He turns up in his and always great van, and he will lay out all the stuff over on sort of maybe five or six of these enormous great six foot tables. The whole lot will be laid out with trays of Meccano. I mean, at one time, you know, you could literally go into a toy shop and buy Meccano, and you could go in and say, right, I just want. Uh, two of part number 126, one of part number 189, and the part number 73A or something. And this woman would have to rummage through this enormous great box of, of spares. And the fact that uh, Meccano ceased manufacture in the UK in, I believe, 1979, uh, didn't mean that the hobby should end, and it's, uh, <coughs> we're all very fortunate that the, the hobby has continued, and, and many people around the world have continued to produce Meccano parts. Still, all over the world is a very popular game. We've got clubs all over the world, in Australia, New Zealand, Spain, France, Canada, anywhere. There's a lot of fans of Meccano. When they make exhibition international, people come from France with models, with different other countries, you know. <laughs> The mainly people are now older people because the new generation are more in computer games and things like that. For young, some people, it's just too fiddly, nuts and bolts. For the youngsters, they, they haven't got time to, you know, it's, it's too much screwing of nuts and bolts together. It, it, it's not an instant thing to do, you know, building a model, even a small model, can take quite a long time. Children now tend to do different other things with computer games, more electronically and all that, but uh, uh, in the old days Meccano was also as, as good for children as for adults. You know. It is a shame because uh, Meccano clubs like the South East London, Meccano clubs and other, they are keen in introducing Meccanos to people, to, to, to children, to go again, you know, starting with Meccano. We have to make the children think that it's very interesting to, to start with Meccano, you know. And it's something great, so why not? Well, I believe with a little bit of effort, um, children will possibly appreciate him with special programs and they will get back the, the, the idea of saying, oh, I like that, I'm going to start up again. And they will possibly develop the, the same hobby as we all got. You know, I think so. Certainly nowadays, it's more an adult hobby than it is uh, a, ch a children's hobby, which is unfortunate, but that's why we are always trying to encourage youngsters to take up the hobby and become club members and, and learn from us. <laughs>